Blog Talk play. Radio. Getting ready. The song's going to play. Well, play. I don't know whether it's playing or not. Oh, and we have a caller already. Um, but I want to get you to... For those who may not know the whole story, can you tell us about that day and what happened? Then we'll get into the callers because we have two callers. Hello? Hello? Rusty? Hello, Rusty? It is Sasma. Hello. I am here. Ah. I, we have a caller, so I would like you to, first of all, start off by telling us about the um, about the case, about what happened um, that day. Well, um, I think my sister woke up that morning. Uh-huh. My sister woke up that morning. They were going to do some last-minute Christmas shopping at the Seminary South Shopping Center, and uh, she wanted to... Uh, see, you know, who she could get to go with her. So she tried to wake my older sister up, Deborah, who was asleep at the house, and she wouldn't get out of bed because she'd been out partying all night, according to her. And then she left there and went by my mother's house, and my mother couldn't go because she was fixed to go to the shop and take care of my dad who had cancer, terminal cancer. And then uh, my mother couldn't go, so she ran by to pick up Renee. And uh, Renee decided, you know, she was in her grandmother's house. She ran by there to pick up Renee and uh, – Renee decided she was going to go with her, but Julie was there, and she wanted to go too. So she ran in the in the house to call Mom to see if she could go. And at that time, you know, Julie's older brother Terry was out there talking to Renee and Rachel. And, uh, you know, Renee and uh, Terry had been promised that earlier that day that, you know, she, he gave her a promise ring. So he was out there talking to his new girlfriend and, she was trying to get them, him to go to the mall, but he had to take care of his friend, Gary, next door. And uh, yeah, Julie finally got permission for her mother to go. So they got in the car and they left. And okay. uh, I think every, everything else speaks for itself. Yeah, sure does. I have callers that are going to be asking you questions. i got to figure out who all everybody is. <laughs> So let's. Unfortunately, I only get phone numbers. Let's go to this nine zero three number. Hi, nine zero three. What is your name? My name is Kelly. How are you? Oh, hi, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Um, ladies and gentlemen, hey. this is Rachel's cousin. Go ahead and ask your question, Kelly. Uh, my main question about it is Bill Hutchins, that was over the security of the mall, the sighting that he's seen with the three girls with another security officer um, has ever been thoroughly investigated. No, that was not thoroughly investigated. As a matter of fact, I have a tape of Bill Hutchins. I recently, well, I've had it all these years. I just had it converted to DVD, but um, I've got a tape of a news story of him about 14 years ago speaking in aggravation stating his side of the story, said that uh, he was at the mall that day and he noticed a truck off, uh, another security guard vehicle off, and uh, he walked over to find out, you know, what he was doing over here in this coordinates because he was not supposed to be in that coordinates because Bill was over there roping off all the parking spots for all the other cars, you know, because it was so congested there. He had to mark all the spots for the employees to park here and all that. So uh, he walks over to this other vehicle, and he says, what the hell? He didn't say hell. He used the F or the F-bomb. He says, what the F are you doing over here? And then he looked up, and he saw the ladies in the front seat of the truck, and he says, I'm sorry, ladies. I didn't see you sitting over there. I wouldn't use that kind of language. And they go, don't worry about it, man. We hear that all the time. And um, nothing was thought about it until the next day when they were announced that they come up missing. Well, Bill Hutchins is trying to do the right thing, try to get a hold of the security, not security guard, but the detective that was in charge of the investigation. So he calls the Fort Worth Police Department, and when he does that, to his surprise, he gets a secretary. They won't let him talk to the uh, – the detective never got back with him, but he told the, the secretary what he had seen that day, and uh, nobody ever called him back. 30 nobody. years later – no, nobody ever called him back from the Fort Worth Police Department 30 years later. 
You hear that a lot in cases. You hear that in a lot of cases where somebody has um, called in a lead and then cold case detectives will be going through and saying, why didn't anybody call this person? Well, yeah, Yeah. it took 30 years for the Fort Worth Police Department to call Bill Hutchins. And we got his whole story on video. I'm going to put in area code 361 now. She's been holding for almost four minutes, or he. Hi, who is this? Hi, who is this? Hello? Kim? Hello? Oh, hi. Hi. Would you like to ask Rusty a question? Yes. Go ahead. Do you think that they should, do you think they should reinvestigate Tommy? Well, absolutely. Who is this? Kim. Kim? Yes. Kim, are you a member on our site? Yes. Do I know you? Yes, she did. <laughs> um, I wrote you. Do I think I should reinvestigate Tommy? Well, of course. Uh, I don't think there's anybody out there that, that would differ with that. Do you differ with that, Kim? No. No, I, I don't. Did they investigate him at the beginning? Yes, they did. I heard he passed Very poly. minorly. He did. Pa- he he matter of fact, poly. he passed two polygraph tests. He passed oh. two polygraph tests. Now, he I noticed one someone else on here. Too. Because I've got a 361 area code, another 817 area code, and, of course, 903. So well, I don't let know this one finish that's her cool. question as if she's satisfied okay. with the answer. I'm sorry, yeah, I was just that, telling you that that person is already on, whoever it is. Oh, wow. For some reason. I'm, okay, I'm who are we talking to? Have a good day. Kim, Thank if you see anything, Thank reach me on Facebook. In. Okay. Thank you so much reach for calling Reach me on Facebook in. if you need me. Yep. Okay, next caller. Okay. Area code 361, are you there? Area code 361, are you there? Are you just listening? Okay, go to the next caller. Um, I don't have any more callers. I just have your niece listening. You and me. <laughs> um, but it's okay. I got plenty okay, of questions for questions. you myself. Yes, you okay. do. Okay. Oops, I went back too far. <laughs> okay, there we go. I went back two pages too far in my notebook. Um Okay, first of all, the Fort Worth Police Department, if you have any information, is 1-817-872-8345. Again, we did a show on this earlier, and I know a lot of you went back and listened to it, and I so appreciate that. Now, it said in one of the newspaper articles, my mother actually caught this, that only two of the girls went in to pick up the pants. What do you make of that? And we have another caller, which we'll get to in a minute. Okay. The, when when you said that the other day, that's the first time I'd ever realized that. Uh, so I don't know what to think about that. I haven't had time to ingest it yet because uh, I always thought all three girls went into the Army-Navy store. And I don't know why they would leave a nine-year-old girl out in the car waiting on them to pick up something out of layaway. That doesn't make sense to me, but it's possible. Oh, some more callers. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, it didn't make a lot of sense to me either. Um, I do have one more question before I get to the caller. Actually, there are two okay. more callers. Um, I understand that Rachel was expecting when she disappeared. Um, that is what we suspect, yes. Do you still believe that Rachel was alive? I know when we spoke before you thought that she was alive. I do not think she's alive anymore. Uh I think that she passed away early on. She was murdered early on in the investigation. Uh Early on. Do you know what what the girls were wearing? Yeah. Do you know what the girls were wearing? Uh, Because it says... I don't... You caught caught me off guard. I don't know that off the top of my head. 
Renee was wearing a yellow Sweet Honesty T-shirt from Avon. Right. And uh, hip hugger bell bottom jeans. As a matter of fact, Avon discontinued that shirt to help us out with the investigation, so none of those, none other of those shirts could get out to the public. Really? So That's that would be the no. yeah. That's yeah, that, that, they, they actually shut down production of that shirt because of this. And I don't really that remember really what Rachel point. was wearing. All that's in the description. It's all out there. Yeah, somebody posted it's, a picture It's all today out there on the webpage. In Pardon. our group of Rachel's wedding band. Somebody posted a picture today in our group of Rachel's wedding band, and it looked like it had stones that in it. That wouldn't be Rachel's wedding band. That wouldn't be Rachel's wedding band. That would be Renee's promise ring. The promise oh. ring that Terry gave her the day they disappeared. Okay. See, Renee wasn't ready to run away from home. She just got promised to Terry Mosley. She just yeah. had a great new relationship with a great new guy. She was not going to run away, I promise yeah. you. And, and as Terry you. Mosley so wisely said, they didn't run away. They asked me to go with them. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Come That's on. Point. They That's didn't point. run away. They asked me to go with them. Okay, we have so. caller area code 512 to start. Caller, what is your name? Hey, Rusty, it's Matthew, a.k.a. Matt. Hey, Matt. What's going hey, buddy. on, bud? Hey, Matt. Hey, uh, you calling just, in. Oh, you bet. I wouldn't miss it. Uh, Rusty, I was just wondering, is there still the uh, interest of uh, dredging the cars out of Benbrook, and are we any closer to that? Absolutely interested in dredging the cars out of Benbrook Lake. I don't know if you're aware of this, Matt, but uh, we have already dove on those cars twice. Oh really? Um, we, I, I'm actually, as we speak, looking at parts that came off those cars right here in my living room. Gotcha. And uh, we, we do fully intend on going back down on them cars. It's just a matter of uh, revenue. It's uh, quite an expensive dive to go down. The last, uh, the last tally I had was twelve thousand dollars. Holy man! So God. it's, it's gonna, it's, yeah, it's gonna have to be funded by the police or funded by somebody other than me because I don't have $12,000 laying around. Do you, Matt? <laughs> Not hardly. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, that is in our goal. That is in our goal. Well, thank you but so what much else for you got, questions. Matt? Long time don't talk, by the way. Got anything else? Hey, yeah, give me a holler, Rusty. Yeah, Matt's an old friend of mine, everybody. I grew up with him. Oh. Oh, Okay. He sounds actually, like Let's stay I live, touch, Yeah, I live next door, and uh, Rachel actually babysat me a couple of times, um, so I grew up with <laughs> That's him. true. That's true. He's known this all his wow. life. So, Thanks Matt, so you stay in touch, okay? I tried, I tried to call you the other day. Try, call me back a little bit later. We'll talk. Okay. All right. Thanks, okay. Matt. You bet. Um, I have caller, area code 817-927. What's your name and what's your question? Whoops. Uh, Yeah, 817-927. What's your question and what's your name? Hello, my name is Kurt. Hi. And I just wanted to say that the blog was a little difficult to find on the computer, but I found it. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) I agree with that. That's Uh, why I pinned the post at the top so that everybody could find it. Well, it it took me it took me a few minutes, but I I got to it. I have it running in the background. Well, I appreciate There's your time, due diligence. <laughs> There's a time delay, so I turned the volume down on it. Uh, have all the infamous serial killers been ruled out as suspects? Uh, the latest I one we ruled so. out was J- the latest one we ruled out was James Mitchell de Bartleben. Uh, we I don't know if you saw by Facebook posting after we ruled out his property, but we did recently, as of this year, do a search of his property uh, with ground penetrating radar. We searched the attic. We searched underneath the house, oh, and we searched the backyard with ground car. penetrating radar. Yes, yeah, they finally let, let us do this, talk, and we cleared it. Let right. They let us do it, and we cleared it, so that part of it's over with. Now, as far as other serial killer goes, I'm looking at none other right now. Um, I, I can't see of any other serial killers that might have anything to do with that. Unless you got some information you want to share with me, do you? <laughs> no, I certainly don't. And I, I did read where you had uh, searched, I believe, the backyard of a house with the ground penetrating radar. And that would be James Mitchell de Bartolaven. He's known for killing over 250 women. God, that's incredible. Has and, that number been verified? And he, and he, uh, no, no, it has not. That's estimations by the police. 
Um, he lived on a street called Spurgeon. Please tell me he's never getting out of jail. Uh. <laughs> he's dead. He's dead. He's oh. dead. Um, he lived on a street called Spurgeon, less than a half a mile away from where my sister lived. Yeah. Right there yes, between I'm, my sister and the mall. I'm familiar with the area. And yeah. uh, the, if, if the Carter's been ruled out, who? The Carter brothers, oh, have they been ruled out? Already. No, the Carter boys have not been ruled out. Um, we're still looking into the Carter boys, and they look very good for this. Uh, we, 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 no, we definitely have not ruled them out. And they have just recently come to light as ex- ex- seriously, you know, inter- people of interest at this time to me, just recently, with all the new huh. postings that uh, have been posted. So, um, yeah, th- they're very interesting. I've already found their house. I know where they lived. I know people that knew them. I've inter- interviewed people that knew who them. Who were they? Were Everybody they that I've talked to. Were they killers or just bad dudes? Or no, they were, were just they? neighborhood badasses that wanted to prove themselves in this world, and they liked to pick up women and rape women. Uh, they, uh, one of the Carter boys, I believe Robin Carter, is in prison right now for running over a lady and attempting to rape oh, nice. her and got caught in the middle of it. And he's getting out of jail in 2020. From what I understand, he comes up for parole. So um, when he gets out on parole, we better all be looking over our shoulders because this guy's a real badass. Um, <clears throat> yes, like, to answer your question, people. they are people of interest. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, yes, and any, any thank other questions you, you have for me, reach me on the Facebook page, okay? Uh, I will respond. Thank you. I, thank you. I Absolutely. appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Um, did they ever figure out who it was that called the Wilsons to say the girls would be on a 725 bus from Houston? They say she identified To my herself. knowledge, they never did figure that out. To my, no, no, to my knowledge, they never did figure that out. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> ah, okay, we have a call from 903-471. What is your name and what is your question? Thank you for calling. Hi, I'm Michelle. I'm also Rachel and Rusty's cousin. Um, oh, hello. My Hi, Michelle. Hi. Um, my question is, is what was left in the car? Were there receipts from inside the mall? Can we prove that they were inside the mall other than by sighting? Uh, what we see in the back seat oh, of that question. car is presents that look like they could have been wrapped at the mall and brought back to the car. As far as receipts, no, we have no record of any receipts. There were savings bonds in the glove compartment. What they were doing there, why they were doing there, I do not know. Um, but no, as far as receipts goes, I do not have any record of any receipts coming from those presents that were in the back seat of that car. And for the record, I've had people tell me there was presents in the trunk of that car. That is false. The presents were in the back seat of that car, the back floorboard. And if you all look at the the video clips and all the pictures recently posted, those pictures are there, and you can actually see the video of the presence in the back seat of the car. Wonderful. The really? I'll check that out. <clears throat> yes. There's a lot of good new information being put out there on the Missing Four Trio page. Um, a lot of – these these people that are they're coming online, we've had some jerks, but we're getting rid of them slowly. But there are some yep. there's some very good information coming on board. Even, even as of today, they're showing pictures, uh, video that I've got and I've had for years, but I didn't ever want to put out there. But it's getting out there. So you know, y'all go look at it, absorb it, see what you think, yeah. because we're getting close here, people. We're getting real close. <coughs> so I sincerely and the people that it, thank you. Michelle, I hope for so too. Joining us, do you have any other questions? And not at this moment, but thank you so much. It's nice to talk to you, Rusty. You too, Michelle. We'll be in touch. Okay. Bye-bye. And it was nice to talk thank to you, you, Michelle. Okay, we have another caller. Oh, we have two more callers. Six one. Uh, yeah, six eight two area code. That's right here, local. Oh, six eight two area code. Hello. Are you there? Hello. Are you there? Well, I guess not. Oh, go to the next that caller. Person, that person dropped, so we'll go to this 817 area code. 817, 237, are you there? Yes, I am. Who is it? Uh, Trish Brew. 
Oh, okay. Hi, Trish. Rusty, you Hi. there? Yeah. I'm here, Trish. How are you? Hey, the other person. I'm oh, pretty back. good. Hey, uh, I was just listening, and it, they said that, or you said that uh, Rachel was wearing a yellow sweet honesty shirt made by Avon. That was that was Renee. Renee. Yes, it, she was wearing a pink one because they didn't make a yellow one. Mm. I had I had Good information. I had the same mm. shirt, and I worked for Avon before they. Uh, well, I knew people that worked for Avon at the time, and it only came in pink. Angelina, for the record, this girl that you're ta- we're yep. talking to right now is Danny Wilson's second wife, the security guard from Seminary South Shopping Center. They supposedly the have wife. the girls in the car. Oh, he's the third, she's the third wife. wife. I thought it was the second. <laughs> yes, and she's been very helpful to us, especially in the search for Danny Wilson's property, which we have found recently. All uh, right. She's been very cooperative and, and, and been very Thank good to so us, and we that. really appreciate that, Trish. Okay, now, um, when he died, the wife he was married to with her children ran home to the Northeast. I don't remember what state. I'll have to stop and think That's about it. That's where I live. <laughs> okay. I live in Massachusetts. <laughs> and that bears some looking into as far as his integrity and their integrity. And That's she might so still have some you. of his stuff, you know? Because she kind of like that. She might still have some of his stuff. He told me once when he was married to the first wife, after he'd come home from Vietnam, he had long guns. And he told me that uh, he and Janice had a fight and they were going to get the divorce. And she turned them all upside down in a bucket of water. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. To a veteran, that's not pretty very, cold-blooded. Not a very nice thing to do. No. No. But, and I wanted to ask you, there's another question I had, and I couldn't find my sure. hand to write it down. But Courthouse Monday, Wing. man. <laughs> courthouse Monday. <laughs> Okay. You know, I'm going to go check okay. those uh, marriage licenses because oh, yeah. I've got. Right. There was uh, one between me and the last one, and I forgot her. Right. My main interest right now is talking to the first wife, um, the one who was married to in 1974, to see what kind of information she can give me about what was going on then. And there's a few things I don't want to mention yeah, on because there, and I think you know I what understand. those are. Right. I and understand. Sometimes – well, can I say something? Sometimes sure. people yes, you may. It's your will show. <laughs> keep items from people. And I know, according to what I've read recently, Julie was wearing some bright red tennis shoes. If somebody kept those tennis shoes or kept that promise ring, they've got to be floating around somewhere. Somebody had to have seen them. Some wife, some girlfriend somewhere <clears throat> had to have seen them. Yeah. I can go out with that. Mm, yes, and this happened reason. when... He was married to Janice. Mm-hmm. So that's and always she was married to Janice in 1974, correct? Yes, he was. Okay. So that's good information. Now, this is the guy that was in the and truck? Is that who we're talking yes. about? Yes. Okay. He was the security Wilson's guard that drove a... Yes. That drove a little mini right, pickup truck. Right, the one the Hutchins went up to and asked him what the police... Yes. That is okay. correct. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, we have a caller that's been waiting on the line for four minutes. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I'm Trish, I just thought. Uh, yes, sir. Stay in touch. Oh, stay you in know, touch, I will. Trish. Thank you so okay. much. All right. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. Area code 817, are you there? Yes, I am. Ah, okay. Hello. Uh, hi. What's hi, your, what's your name and what's your question for Rusty? Uh, David and Rusty, um, I I understand that you had ruled out Debar Levin because I know you did the sonar at his house there on Spurgeon, but what if what about the possibility that he could have committed the uh, the crime off the uh, 
off that property, does does that completely rule him out? I mean, it could have occurred somewhere other than at the house. Uh, is my it thought. could have, it could have, but quite frankly, um, with what we've got going on now, DeBar Laban is no longer a person of interest. Um, he's pretty much been ruled out due to the facts of the, what we've turned up recently. That some of these other things, with possibly Tommy or um, the Carter brothers, seem to be of stronger. Uh, Extremely strong, right? Way stronger than Bartleben. De Bartleben, even though he had a record of, you know, creating problems at, at shopping centers such as Seminary South and impersonating law officers. I mean, you don't think there's any chance he could have possibly tricked them in that manner? No, and this is one of the reasons I say no, is because. The security guard they were seen with at the mall was positively identified as Danny Wilson. Well, we just got off the phone with Danny Wilson's wife. Therefore, we know that wasn't James Mitchell to Bart Laban. That was Danny Interesting. Wilson. Interesting. Okay. See, I didn't realize that. That 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 makes that does make sense. <laughs> yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. sense. And uh, there's new information that has come in recently, last weekend, on Danny Wilson. Okay. That is uh, looking real good for us to rule out, to giving us a way that we can a- a- actually rule Danny Wilson out of the picture or in the picture. In the right, but w- at least one way or, or the in other. the picture. Right, we right. will know soon whether we can rule Danny Wilson in or out. That's and good. We, and if we one can rule him person. in, and if we can rule him in, we have a possible location of the bodies. Wow, wow. Well, good well, luck. And that's I know all you'll... I'm going to say about that. Right. And, 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 I don't and, blame I you. <laughs> I know you'll keep us posted as you can. I will. And yeah. I, yes, I will. Most definitely. Okay, sounds good. Very good. I appreciate your time this afternoon. And good luck. Thank you, you good for luck. Call. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, bye-bye, caller. Uh, we don't have any more callers unless someone calls in in the next Two minutes because we got about two minutes and forty five seconds left of the show. But boy, we we got a lot okay. of callers today. I've never gotten that many callers. <laughs> um, I've got a question. Well, uh, oh, oh, who's go this? Ahead. Oh, an anonymous uh, caller. Hi, someone anonymous said caller. something about how you doing. It's someone right. said something earlier about Thomas being investigated. Uh, is there any relation between Thomas and Danny? Are you asking me that? Uh, do you, does anybody know that? Do you know that? Do not know that. Do not have any connection. Huh. Any anything that ties them two together. I was wondering okay. if it was anything Although, that ties the girls to the Carter brothers, if they knew them. Uh, we're finding out information that it is a very strong possibility that the Carter boys did know my sister. Um, the, the, they're saying that Robin Carter killed uh, uh, killed Leisha McGee. Well, um, Leisha McGee was a friend of my sister's. She was the a friend one, of both of my sisters. The other one that was taken from um, the parking lot. Okay, we got 90 seconds uh, left, and we have another caller. Okay. Thank you, anonymous um, caller. This is yes, Trish thank again. You. Uh, oh, hi, Trish. Danny did not know Tommy Trelika. Uh, oh, okay. At all? Not at all. I know That's every aunt, cousin, second cousin, third cousin, brother down the street, and they are <laughs> absolutely in no way related. Well, then you know, and they're not friends in any way that you know of. Not that I am aware of, no. <laughs> Okay. And you know something, well, that pretty much man, that up. he's a Riverside guy, Danny was a Riverside guy, and Tommy's a Southside guy. That's true. You okay. Know? Those parts, those are different parts of Fort Worth? Uh, they're opposite yes. ends, yeah. Oh, okay. Opposite, complete opposite ends. Okay. Well, so, forgive Trish, me. Thank I thank you. I appreciate that. No problem. I'm way up here in Massachusetts, so I haven't got a clue. Well, Trish, um, I will be in touch. Got, okay, we've got 30 seconds left. Um, anything? Okay, let me close it. Yeah, you want to close, close it? With? Okay. Uh, I want to say to all the 
members out there. I really appreciate all the support. It's been a, a great honor to have you guys support us so much. I want to let you all know that we are closer than anyone out there really knows. I just can't let on the details right now. But it is looking really good for really great progress in the near future. So you all just keep your fingers crossed and keep saying your prayers and hang in there. Remember, I'm always here if you can reach me on Facebook, and I will always answer your questions to the best of my knowledge. I appreciate it, everybody. Yes, thank you so much, and thank you, everybody, for interacting on the show. It's been amazing. God bless you. Have a wonderful day, and it looks like our episode is over. Again, thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Bye, Rusty. Are we off? Yep. Are we off? Yes. Okay, what do you want to do now? <laughs> I'm all done. Are we done? <laughs> yeah. You're all done. done? Okay. I don't okay, know whether the song played or not. It's here under oh, audio. I never heard it. And I hit play, but I don't know whether it played. I never heard it. Yeah, but that was the blog talk music month. So I don't know whether it played. Maybe it will come up on the, um, when people watch, listen to it on the replay. Okay, um, all right, that'll work go. then. We're done. I got okay. a party to go to. Thank you so much. Right. Okay, enjoy. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.